Okay, so let's show you uh, a couple more chemical reactions. Um, I'm going to do two chemical reactions that are both going to use hydrochloric acid. Um, and this is three molar hydrochloric acid. It's a decent concentration. Um, if I were to get this on my skin, I'd have to wash off pretty quickly, otherwise I'd start to feel that tingly burn. If I were to get that in my eye, it would be a problem. Uh, that's why, of course, I am wearing safety goggles. Um, when we use acid, a lot of the times in chemistry class, um, we have baking soda on the sideline, sodium bicarbonate. The reason we do is because baking soda neutralizes acid. Uh, does a great job at it. Um, and when that happens, that chemical reaction happens, um, there's a, a set of uh, um, um, products that are given off um, and it, it's very easy to tell what's going on with the, re with the reaction. Um, so let's, let's show you that. So we have a, you know, the hydrochloric acid, clear colorless liquid solution. It's aqueous because um, the acid is it, it dilute in water. Um, we have the baking soda, which is sodium bicarbonate. It is a white uh, powdery solid. Um, and what we'll do is we'll take a couple uh, drops or squirts of the, of the acid and we're going to put it into the... Um, baking soda, the sodium bicarbonate, and you know, definitely got that fizz. Definitely have that, that bubble, and I'll bring it a little closer. Bring it close to the mic. Okay. So we have lots of bubbling going on and we still look like we have a lot of solid at the bottom and we don't know if that's um extra just baking soda or if that's something else um we'll talk about what it is in class but we definitely saw a chemical reaction a gas was given off um we'll talk more about that gas in a minute but first i want to show you the next one uh, the next one i'm going to take some hydrochloric acid and I'm going to put it right into uh, the test tube. I'm going to put quite a bit in here and I'm going to have that react with uh, magnesium metal which here I have little bits of magnesium metal. I'm going to do two. Actually I'm just going to do one for now. Um, and I'm going to put that in the acid and it bubbling and bubbling and giving off a gas. Okay. And, you know, so that has bubbles and that gave off a gas. And the question is, well, what's going on with the gases? What kind of gases are there? And um, we're going to test the gases. Uh, the one gas given off by the sodium bicarbonate, we're going to use what we call a flame test to see what's going on with it. So to do a flame test, or a splint test, a burning splint test, I'm sorry, um, and we're going to take a, a wooden, it looks like a, a coffee stirrer, and light that on fire, and I'm going to take um, my acid, I'm going to add it to all this, excuse me, dump it in there. Dump it in there, and it's gonna make gas. Now this is a gas, give it all, and if I take my, my burning splint and put it into the beaker, notice it goes out. I'll do that again. And there's plenty of, uh, baking soda in there. I'm going to add some more uh, acid and make a lot more gas. And that gas, because I know what it is, it's, it's a dense gas, so it's pretty much staying in that beaker. It's not escaping. But if I put the burning, let's get some of the, there we go, put the, put the flame into that beaker, notice it goes out. And when that happens, 
it could be a test for carbon dioxide. This is filled right now with carbon dioxide. And carbon dioxide does not, does not uh, let burning happen because it pushes out all the oxygen. So, you know, there used to be old style fire extinguishers, carbon dioxide fire extinguishers, which just fill the area with carbon dioxide, puts out a fire because it just pushes the oxygen out of the way. So when you have a burning splint test and it goes out, probably carbon dioxide gas given off. Now, if I do the same kind of test for the magnesium uh, and the hydrochloric acid for that gas, so I'll light it up. Oh, I have plenty of acid in there. Trust me, there's that acid. I, I know I used a piece of metal in that acid before, um, but trust me, there's plenty of active acid still in there. So we have, that's why we have to be careful. I'm gonna put two pieces of metal in. I'm gonna let that gas build up. Let it build up in that test tube. I can kind of see it wisping out the top and I'm gonna put the burning splint right over the top. Pop! Where, 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 where have we seen that before? When the fire or the spark causes the gas to pop. Like that. That wasn't a strong pop, but nonetheless it was a pop. And that pop means that that gas is burning and exploding in the test tube. And that's a much different reaction than, than before with the, with the carbon dioxide. So, we'll talk about that gas. We'll talk about the other gas. We'll talk about the products uh, in class. You know, I was cleaning up here and uh, I forgot to mention that when you have um, acid and the metal react, um, all that fizzing and that activity, um, even if I didn't do the flame test or the, the, the burning splint test, and you can't see it in the video, but the, this is really hot. I mean, it's really hot. That acid reacts so vigorously with the metal that literally the friction uh, of that chemical reaction of those atoms just slamming into each other and and those those bonds breaking and reforming um, this is uh, exothermic meaning a lot of heat's given off um, you don't see flame but you definitely feel that heat so um, I know you can't feel that uh, through a video but I'm, I'm letting you know that that's quite hot and that was again not caused just by that that little uh, miniature pop okay all right sorry about that See ya.